This video continues our series on the brain stem and this video in particular will cover the mesencephalon. So our mesencephalon is going to be a short, mostly straight structure that is going to connect the pons and the medulla to the diencephalon. Our mesencephalon is going to contain a portion of the cerebral aqueduct, a portion of the reticular formation, which we will be discussing at the end of this video, and various other tracts, including tracts that go along with cranial nerve 3 and cranial nerve 4. So cranial nerve 3 emerges from the middle of the mesencephalon right above the pons and cranial nerve 4 emerges from the posterior aspect of the mesencephalon and wraps around towards the anterior aspect of the mesencephalon. Cranial nerve 3 is called the oculomotor nerve and cranial nerve 4 is called our trochlear nerve and both of them have very similar function in that they control eye movements. On the posterior side of our mesencephalon, we see four bulges called our superior and inferior colliculi. These bulges can be seen more clearly in a posterior view. Here they are on the posterior aspect of our mesencephalon. And this picture shows some other structures as well some nuclei that lie deeper, like our red nucleus here. And we can see a portion of our reticular formation up in the mesencephalon. So why do we care about these corpora quadrigemina? We call them the corpora quadrigemina because corpora means body, quad means four, and gem means stump. So we have these four bodies on the backhand side of our mesencephalon. And we can divide them into our superior colliculi, which are going to function in visual attention, tracking objects with your eyes, reflex movements such as blinking, focusing, pupillary dilation and constriction, and orientation. So our superior colliculi are in charge of our visual orientation reflexes. If you see something move out of the corner of your eye, you will turn your eyes to look at that object. Or if somebody walks into the room, you will move your head and eyes to see who that new person is. You don't think about doing this, it's a reflex, but your superior colliculi are in charge of those movements. Your inferior colliculi have similar functions, but instead of doing reflex movements of the head to visual stimuli, we're going to function in reflex movements of the head to auditory stimuli. So very similar to those visual cues, you are going to have auditory cues. So if you hear something to the side or behind you, you will turn to look at that object. If something crashes to the floor, you may even go as far as to turn your entire body to look at whatever has fallen. So here again we have a table that summarizes the function of our mesencephalon, but we're not quite done talking about our mesencephalon because we need to talk about our reticular formation. Our reticular formation is going to be this area that connects to our diencephalon but runs down through our entire brain stem. So it has areas of the reticular formation that are located in the medulla, in the pons, and in the mesencephalon. A reticular formation is going to have some somatic motor control. So this somatic motor control is going to be in our reticulospinal tracts. 
These reticulospinal tracts are going to adjust your muscle tension to maintain appropriate muscle tone, balance, and posture during body movements. So we don't want all of our muscles to be contracted all at once when we move. That would make for some limited and stiff movements. Instead, we want to contract some muscles and not others. So our reticulospinal tracts help us maintain that appropriate muscle tone. We also have gaze centers. These are those centers that we just spoke about in our corpora quadrigemina and more specifically our superior colliculi which allow us to track and fixate objects within our vision. And then we have these central pattern generators. These are going to be these are going to be associated with our medulla oblongata and these central pattern generators are going to be responsible for producing rhythmic signals for breathing and swallowing. Our reticular formation also has function in that our cardiovascular control centers, meaning our cardiac and vasomotor centers of our medulla oblongata, are actually located in the reticular formation. A reticular formation is going to be the origin of descending analgesic pathways which function in pain modulation. These allow you to ignore pain that you may feel outside of your central nervous system. Now let's talk about our reticular activating system in particular. Our reticular activating system or RAS is going to have some very interesting functions. Our RAS is going to work in conjunction with the mesencephalon to maintain consciousness. Our reticular formation is going to do this by sending signals to our cerebrum at regular intervals and this is what keeps us awake. As you begin to get sleepy, those signals are going to decrease in frequency and that causes you to be sleepy. Along the same lines as maintaining our consciousness, once we do fall asleep, about every 90 minutes or so, we are going to send signals to our cerebrum while we are sleeping and this is going to create dreams. And then when we begin to wake up, those signals are going to increase in frequency and that wakes us up from sleep. So you can see we have many functions that are all tied into the same characteristic of our reticular activating system in that sending of signals to our cerebrum to either maintain consciousness, to put us to sleep, create dreams, or wake us from sleep. Another great function of our reticular activating system is habituation. There are many stimuli in your environment that you do not need to pay attention to. Does it matter if you can feel your socks rubbing against your skin? No, it doesn't matter. You don't need to focus on that. And so you're going to take these stimuli that aren't important and you are going to ignore them. Along the same lines, our reticular activating system is going to help to focus our attention. So there are a lot of background noises that you automatically tune out. If you are sitting in a classroom with a projector, that projector makes a hum. And that hum is a constant sound. And it's not important to your daily functioning and so your reticular activating system is going to habituate to that hum and it ignores it. However, if someone calls your attention to that hum, then you start to notice it and you can hear it and you can focus on it and it may become super annoying, but it's there and you can pay attention to it. 
So with these functions, we can see several dysfunctions that relate to our reticular activating system. So if we think about our habituation and our focus, well, attention deficit disorder occurs when you cannot focus because you cannot ignore those random stimuli that aren't necessarily important or relative to what you're doing at the moment. So you may be having a converse squirrel and your attention gets pulled in a different direction because something happened and you're not able to ignore it. So attention deficit disorder can be linked to our reticular activating system. If we cannot wake from sleep, we call that a coma. And the flip side of that is you can't fall asleep. You are maintaining your consciousness at too high a level, which we would call insomnia. And then in between those two, you have a condition called narcolepsy, where you randomly stop maintaining your consciousness, and so you fall asleep without intending to. So we have sleep disorders or comas that also relate to our reticular activating system. So along with these disorders, you can think about different drugs that are used to target our reticular activating system. Any kind of um, barbiturate or a sleep medication is going to target your reticular activating system. Um, it's also affected by alcohol. Sometimes alcohol makes you sleepy. Uh, and things along the lines of Ritalin are going to help focus your attention. So this wraps up our short series on the brainstem, but we do have more videos on the brain. So if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact your instructor.